Good morning. Good morning. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, actually, uh, been requested. Alan Miller is in the hospital, so be please praying for him. He has some blood clots, but he's actually doing better. Right? Mm -hmm. He's doing better, so be praying for him. And Gail's son Tim uh, is in the hospital with cancer, with stage four. So please, please be praying for him. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started. Uh, we are taking the youth hiking. We're going on a hiking trip April the 23rd. I got a flyer here if anybody needs one. Uh, but we're going to stop at eat breakfast at the junction and then head up to DuPont State Forest for hiking. With hiking, we leave here at nine o'clock. So April 23rd, leave here at nine o'clock to go hiking. Also, VBS will be here before we know it. There's a sign-up list. If you want to help in VBS, please 
uh, sign up for that. Also, there's a, a list for shirts. Uh, Andrew, if you will flip it over, or somebody flip it over for shirts. There's also there's a sign up list that you can sign up to buy a shirt. Also, if you want to go online, uh, there's a form online that you can actually fill out uh, on our Fingerville Facebook page. Also, if you want to buy a shirt, I'll know the price of the shirt once we get the total number of shirts that we need. So um, it's the more you buy, the lesser it is. So uh, I'll know. Uh, probably give it another couple weeks, and uh, we'll get those ordered, and we'll know the price of it then. So just remember that. Also, uh, no children's church today. So we all we try to uh, cancel children's church every so often. Uh, so there'll be no children's church uh, today. Uh, but there are also many kids. We got a little form here uh, that you can uh, write down the message and stuff. Keep up with uh, a different thing that, uh, in the service. Uh, if you want one of these, uh, I'm going to have someone uh, pass it out in just uh, a little bit. Uh, also, I want to uh, thank everyone that runs the the sound system and runs the slides and everything. That's a lot of times you don't know who's up there until something goes wrong. Am I right? I mean, you're like me. First time something goes wrong with sound system, <laughs> I mean, we look up there and then we find out, oh, who's actually running the sound system? <laughs> so, uh, but sometimes things don't go the way we want it to go. Uh, there's a lot of things I know when I when we first started COVID, I was running Facebook Live, and back then we had bad internet. We got better internet now, and I was I'd have people that was watching from home like I can't hear, I can't, it's not, it's buffering, and I'm like I can't help it, <laughs> and it was weird. Um, it, it started getting real hot, and I was videotaping. Preacher Andy was preaching. I was videotaping, and my iPad started overheating. And I told Preacher Andy, "Then like we got to, this ain't working. <laughs> I can't even tape it outside anymore." So things always, always go. I mean, sometimes it goes wrong, uh, but uh, be patient. Uh, sometimes when you try to change the slides, sometimes it don't go as fast as you want it to go. Uh, so, uh, and then, by the way, Xander, when I'm preaching, if my iPad doesn't work, uh, I'll need you to take over that. So, all right, Tessie, you come up here. <laughs> so, um, this coming weekend on the 16th, we'll have the children's Easter egg hunt. Um, everyone's welcome to come. Everyone's welcome to come. Um, sorry, I'm having like sinus and allergy, all that mess. But um, anyway, <clears throat> everyone's welcome to come. We're going to have uh, cookie decorating. There'll be prizes, um, all that good, fun stuff. That's this weekend on Saturday from 11 to 1. And then on the 30th, we're having a women's luncheon. Um, all the women of the church are invited. We just ask that you purchase um, a $5 ticket and um, I'll have those. I'll wait here on the front pew for a little while after church if anybody wants to come get one. Um, that is gonna help us have a head count to know how many um, are coming and how much food we need to have. And we're also gonna have a speaker there. So we'd just like for all of you to come out and have a great time, fellowship and, and um, support our speaker and um, <clears throat> be able to just um, get together. And we haven't gotten to do anything in a long time, so we'd love to see y'all there. All right, Kathy.
and real velvet cake. <laughs> uh, last announcement. If I don't say it now, I forget. This is building fund day, so when the people take up offering, they'll take it up twice. Uh, first time will be regular offering. Second time will be building funds. So uh, remember that. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for this wonderful day that you bless us with. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house. Uh, this morning, uh, me and Chrissy and the kids just visited someone yesterday and how they're, how we heard how they were missing being able to come to church and they couldn't because of their, uh, their sickness. But Lord, what a privilege it is and honor it is to be able to come. There's a lot of people that would love to be here but can't. There's a lot of people that should be here but won't come. But Lord, I pray, God, that you'll uh, give them a burden, a, a desire to, uh, to want to be in, in church on Sunday morning, uh, to want to come and, and to have a desire to want to learn more about you. We want to come to, to worship you. Lord, be with the singing. Be with me as I get up and just a little bit and preach. Lord, I pray everything is said and done, be done for your glory. And you'll praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everybody. Can we please stand for worship? And while you're standing, I'll read one of my favorite verses from the Bible. And it's Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. And it reads, Come to me, all you who, are, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what sticks out to me most from these verses, and you can almost miss it if you're not looking for it, but it's when Jesus tells us that he, who he is at his heart. He says, for I am gentle and lowly at heart. Out of all the things Jesus, the Son of God, could use to describe himself, things like sovereign, king, lord, or anything else, it's interesting to me that he chooses gentle and lowly to describe himself. Not only who he is some of the time, but who he is at his very core. And he says to who he is to us and who he is for us, for he is gentle and lowly. Today is Palm Sunday. It's the very day Jesus publicly took on the role as king and savior. He was not the warrior king that Israel had wanted and waited for. He was here for a more <coughs> divine reason. He was here for us all. Jesus describing himself as gentle and lowly in Matthew is the same God who this very day, 2,000 years ago, was mentally preparing himself to die for us all. And that's the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, 
It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down and surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Just keep you standing. And I'd like to thank the people up in the booth, too. Once it does the music, you know, it's hard when you come out here and you get ready to sing, you look, and ain't nobody in that hole because you know you're in trouble. So it's good that Xander's run the sound for me today, and I want to thank him for that. Because he's where you there for off toward him.
While they're working on that, I was going to read you something here. I found this on the internet, and uh, Wade and Jimmy will, will like this. Preacher Andy will like it too. So here it says, the keynote speaker was in such a hurry to get the venue that when he arrived and sat down at the head table, he suddenly realized that he had forgotten his dentures. Turning to the man next to him, he whispered, forgot my teeth. The man said, no problem. With that, with that, he reached to his briefcase and pulled out a pair of dentures. Try these, he said. The speaker tried them. Too loose, he said. The man dug around this briefcase again. Here, try these. The speaker tried them and responded, too tight. The man didn't seem back about it all. He dug around this briefcase again. Here, I have this pair. Give them a try. The speaker smiled. They fit perfectly. He ate his meal and gave a speech without any further troubles. After the event concluded, the speaker went over to thank his benefactor and returned to, the, returned to spare parts. I want to thank you for coming to my rescue. Where's your office? I've been looking for a good dentist. Oh, I'm not a dentist, the man replied. I'm the local funeral director. <laughs> so, Wade always has these pins, these, these Floyd's pins. He starts giving you dentures, start being a little concerned. So, all righty, I want to preach a message on getting a glimpse of God's love. Getting a glimpse of God's love. I think y'all may have to control the slides, right? So, we are... On, on Sunday nights, we have something we call impact. And our goal is to, our goal is for God to make an impact. Well, that's what we're praying, that God will make an impact in the kids and young people that comes out on Sunday nights. And in September, we're having what we call the Impact, impact Youth and College Conference. And the theme of it is Love God love people and I've been I've had this thought in my mind for a while now and think about how you can't truly love people until you first truly love God see when you get a grasp of God's love you won't have a problem of being a servant that's pleasing to him when you get truly get a grasp of, of God's love, you will talk different. You will act different. You will live different. No one will have to wonder whether or not you're a Christian or not because they will see it in the life that you live because you truly have a grasp of, of God's love. See, I truly, husbands, before the Bible says to love your wife as God loved the church. But you can't truly love your wife the way God wants you to love them until you first truly love God. Until you get a grasp of his love. Wives, the Bible says to be submissive to your husband. You're not truly going to be submissive to your husband until you first have a grasp of God's love. And then it goes on how kids need to obey their parents. Parents say amen on that. Come on, God. <laughs> But kids are not going to really obey their parents until they first grasp God's love. See, when you grasp God's love, your life changes. You'll be different, you'll act different, you'll talk different, you'll live different. You won't put things on social media that you shouldn't put on there. Your life, you'll live a life that the Bible says we should live a blameless life, a pure life. Really get a grasp of God's love. Uh, you won't give anybody a reason to say anything bad about you. So this morning, I want to preach a message from a very familiar passage of Scripture. Y'all bear with me. 
Allergies are crazy. John 3.16. Every one of you know and quote uh, this passage of Scripture. I'm sure I can probably get any kid here to come up here and they can probably quote John 3.16 to you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Just a few points from this very familiar passage of Scripture I want to uh, preach this morning. But before I start, let's, let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for this wonderful morning that you blessed us with. Lord, help me as I deliver this message. You promised me years and years, years ago that when I stand behind this pulpit that you will give me the words to say. And Lord, I'm depending on that, God. I need you, Lord. I need you to speak through me. I need you to get me out of the way. Help me not to preach on my opinions, God, but just to simply deliver what thus saith the Lord. Lord, speak to hearts. You know each person's heart here, Lord. You know exactly what they're going through. You know exactly what they're needing. But Lord, help them, Lord. Help us all to grow closer to you. Help us all to just get a glimpse of God's love, to grasp God's love. Help us to be different, God. Help us to live a life that's pleasing to you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the first point I want to talk about this morning is the source of God's love. The source of God's love. What I'm, I'm just going to break this passage of Scripture down. In fact, I, if I could probably stay here all day on this two words, for God. I could probably preach all week on those two words, for God. But I just want to give you three attributes of, of God this morning in this first point. First of all, he's our omnipresent God. That word just simply means he's everywhere. Uh, there's nowhere that our God's not at. In fact, Psalm 139, verse 7 through 10. Y'all can switch that slide, please. There you go. Psalm 139, verse 7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. He's with us at all times. In fact, if, you have the Holy, if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. That means wherever you go, you take God with you. Where you're at, whatever you're going through, God is there with you. You may have lost a loved one. We was just at Chrissy's uncle's house last night. And he received some bad news that they're going to have to stop. He's got cancer. We've been praying for him on Wednesday nights. His name is Harvey Kelly. And they're going to have to stop the treatment. And he was a little, he, he, he was, I almost started crying a couple of times. But he has peace about it. The reason is, is he has God with him. He has God with him to help him along this path that he's going on. He knows that he has, does not have long to live, but he knows God's with him, and he knows where he's going. In fact, he wanted Michaela to sing a couple of songs for him, and that song she sung, she sung with him at his house last night. But God, is, but God that is with him at this time He's with us. He's with you wherever you go. Women's having a, a women's conference, and they're having a lady come. Her name is Jennifer Holmes, and she's going to mention a, a precious lady I've never met, but I've heard about, that lives in Haiti, and her mission to take care of those orphan kids at her place. Precious lady. I've never, like I said, I've never met her. I just heard about her and heard a lot of wonderful things about her. And, and Jennifer will probably mention her a lot. 
But the same God that is with Miss Mama Mia in Haiti, huh? Mama Miss, yeah. Mama Miss in Haiti, it's the same God that's with us here in Fingerville. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know what we're going to go through in the future. To be honest with you, I don't think it's going to be long for the Lord's going to come back. When you know how this world is, you know what's going on. But whatever we have to go through here at Fingerville, whatever you have to go through at your home, if you're a Christian, God's with you. And God's going to help you along the way. But not only is he an omnipresent God, but he is an omnipotent God. That's a word that simply means he's all-powerful. He has power in creation. The Bible says in Psalm 33, 6, if I'll swap it over for me, uh, it talks about his word, the universe was created, Psalm 33, 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. We have three heavens. We've got the heaven where the birds and the, they fly around. That's the first heaven. We've got the second heaven. That's, the, that's where the sun and the stars and the moon is. That's the second heaven. And then the third heaven, of course, is where God is. And God created all three heavens. God created everything that you see. I know uh, we're getting close to vacation time and we just went last weekend to uh, Mount Airy to see the Andy Griffith place. Before long, we're going to be going to the beach. Brother Gene, they just went on the cruise. And it's just amazing just looking at God's creation. I love just sitting on the beach, just looking out in the ocean and thinking about how God created all this. It's just so awesome. He created the universe. He created everything. But he also created you, and he created me. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. You were born... Because God allowed you to be conceived. You were not an accident. You were created for a purpose. God has a purpose. God has a plan for every single one of us. And while I'm there, I'm just going to throw this in. Abortion is murder. I'm going to say amen. Amen. Abortion is murder. There's, I know we have some politicians that says it's okay for a woman to abort their child. You got an organization called Planned Parenthood that says it's okay for a woman to abort their child. But my friends, it's not right. <laughs> that baby that was conce conceived in that mother's womb was created by God for a purpose, for a plan. It's not our right to take or to murder a baby that's in the mother's womb. God created that baby. But we, have an, we serve an omnipotent God. He created all, he, he's power of, over creation. He created all mankind. But he also has power in transformation. I'm thankful when I got saved, he changed me. I, I, I did not, I was not in the drugs, the alcohol, things like that. I did not do that stuff. But I was still lost. I was still headed for hell. And God took me off the road to hell and put me on the road to heaven. I know many of you could thank God or do thank God for how he changed you how he changed your life. You can think about how you once were, what you once did, 
and how God dramatically changed your life. Put you on the path to heaven. We're all on a road to hell at one time. We all have had a dramatic change. God has transformed. If you're saved, God has transformed you. That's why I believe if you're saved, you're different. You're not the same person that you used to be. When I was talking to Harvey, Chrissy's uncle, last night, he was talking about how he, he, got, he, was saved, he got saved when he was younger, but he went out to the world and, and started doing some bad stuff. But he was miserable. And I've heard Greg say this a lot of times when he did the same thing. He was miserable. God was convicting their heart. And that's what happens when you get saved and you go out in the world and do things you should not do. God will convict your heart. God will make you miserable. God wants you to come back to him. It's because he changed. When you, he gets saved, he, he changes you and when you do things you should not do, God will convict your heart. That's why if you're saved and, and you're out in the world doing things, well, if you say you're saved and you go out in the world doing things you should not do and God's not convicting that heart, God, and you're not miserable, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Maybe that you need to be, be saved. Maybe you can give your life to Jesus. But He is an omnipotent God. He's an omnipresent God. But also, he's an omniscient God. Psalm 147, verse 4 and 5, guys. He says, He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. God, great is our, God, our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. God knows, this is, God knows everything and still loves you. <laughs> God knows everything about you, and he still loves you. That's awesome. I, I, I'm going to say it one more time. God knows everything about me. God knows everything about you, and he still loves us. He knows everything. He knows your problems. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He knows your anxiety. He knows your tears. He knows every trial that you go through. Why? Because he knows everything. A lot of you don't know about this about me, but I'm, I'm a little better now, but in the past, I, I, I suffer anxiety sometimes. I go through these anxiety spells, and it just hits you. <laughs> hits you. I mean, you don't even not expect it, and all of a sudden, this anxiety just hits you. And there are those times that I was facing this anxiety I was going through. I would just call out to God and say, God, here it is. I'm having this anxiety about this problem, this situation in my life. I'm just going to give it to you. You know about it. I'm just going to let you take care of it and let you handle it. He knows our problems. First Peter 5 says, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Exodus 3, 7, I love this verse. The Lord said, I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. He knows everything about us. He knows your needs. Matthew 6, 25 and 26 speaks about how, uh, yeah, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more better than they? He knows our needs. He's an omniscient God. He's an omnipotent God. He's an omnipresent God. But not only do we see the source of God's love where it says for God, but let's look at the characteristics of God's love where it says for God so loved, so loved. First of all, he has a patient love. Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. His love is patient towards lost people. Just think about this for, just for a little bit. When you were lost, 
How many times you pushed God aside? How many times you pushed, said, God, I, I don't want you, I don't need you? And how patient his love was to you. We should all be praising God this morning when we start thinking about how patient his love was towards us was when we were lost. I could be in hell today. I didn't get saved until I was 20 years old. I could be in hell today. I mentioned this before. I mentioned it again. I remember one time. No, people do not do this. We were, I was riding with someone else. Didn't have my license that time. We're going down Frontage Road right in front of Millican. Racing. Someone's on 85. We were on the Frontage Road. We're racing. Blind. That car could have easily crashed. And I could be in hell today. I'm thankful God's love was patient towards me. But my friends, there is a deadline. You may be here lost. And you may be putting salvation to the side. Like, I'll get saved tomorrow. I'll get saved the next day. There is a deadline. We don't know when that deadline is. You may pull out his parking lot and you may get hit. You may be going down the road and some car may hit you head on. And you're face God and you will face God. If you're lost, he's going to cast you into hell forever, forever, forever. There is a deadline. Like I said before, I believe the Lord's coming back soon. If you don't know this, every Christian will be taken to heaven. But every lost person will be left here. And here you are. If you're lost and you're left behind, you will be left behind with every other lost person in this world. Can you imagine how this world's going to be? Can you imagine the turmoil, the chaos this world's going to be when all Christians, when the Holy Spirit, when all Christians are taken to heaven and every lost person will be left here? I promise you, you do not want to be left behind. I encourage you to make sure you're saved today. Don't leave this church building. You know for sure that you are saved. But he's patient with lost people. But he also is patient with saved people. I don't know about you, but I've failed God plenty of times. But I'm thankful that his love is patient towards me. Even after I've been saved. I've, I've done him wrong. I've failed him many ways. But his love is patient. His love is patient. Someone mentioned, someone mentioned this about me, that I walk around like I'm perfect. No, I'm not. I'm far from perfect. I make mistakes. I do wrong. But I'm glad his love is patient. His love is patient. And you may be sitting here backsliding, not doing what you should do. I promise you this. God's waiting with open arms. <laughs> He's waiting with open arms, waiting on you to come back to Him. In fact, He's right where you left Him. At some point that you got off the path and start going towards the world. But I promise you this. You repent. Tell God you're sorry. Confess your sins to God. You can go back where you got off at and God's right there waiting on you <laughs> with open arms. In fact, He's wanting you to come back to Him. There's many people in this world that say they're saved, but they're out there doing things they should not be doing. He's waiting. God's waiting with open arms, waiting on you, wanting you to come back to Him. He's convicting you. Because he wants you to get right with God. He wants you to come back to him. I'm thankful he's patient with saved. But just as, his patient, just as there's a deadline for his patience towards lost people, sooner or later, if you stay out in the world too long, his patience may run out on you. There's a lot of people that's been rolled down, rolled down in the casket Simply because God's got to a point where God's like, well, they're doing more bad than good, so well, I'm going to go ahead and take them to heaven. 
one thing I don't, I, I, I probably would never say this if I'm preaching a funeral, but wouldn't you hate for someone to say this about you? He used to live for God. He used to live for God. He used to do things that was right. He used to come to church like he's supposed to. He used to read his Bible like he's supposed to. He once was close to God, but he went into the world, started doing things he should not be doing. I wouldn't want him to, I wouldn't say that about me. What I want people to say about me is he fought a good fight. <laughs> he kept the faith. He finished the course. Oh, but I'm thankful that he has a patient love. But not only patient love, but everlasting love. Jeremiah 31.3 says, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. In fact, the Lord had appeared to me saying, yeah, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I hear people say this. I'm sure you have too. They'll say this about their mate. I used to love them. There was a time that I used to love my husband. There was a time I used to love my wife. I'm thankful God's love's not like that. I'm thankful that when I, before I was born, God loved me. After I die, God's still going to love me. There will never be a time when God does not love you, that the God does, will not love me, his everlasting love. And I need to hurry, my goodness. Un, not only an everlasting love, but an unconditional love, meaning no limitations. Conditional love just simply means if you love me, then I will love you. I'm thankful God's love's not like that. If we just get a grasp of that, I'm thankful that there's, when there's times that I don't love God like I should, God still, he still loves me. But not only unconditional love, but unequal love. Nothing compares to it. I guess the closest love to God's love is probably a mom's love for a child. But still, that doesn't even compare to how much God loves you. Uh, let's, let's get going. The source of God's love. Characteristics of God's love. But thirdly, the object of God's love, the world. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what color you are. Doesn't matter if you, how much money you have. You're rich or poor. God loves you. You realize that God loves the straight and the gay? I mean, God does not love the sin. You know, we, we, we're hearing a lot of people coming out saying that uh, they're gay or whatever. God does not love that sin, but God sure loves the sinner. And I'm thankful for that. I think a lot of times our problem as Christians is that we want to push aside People that we hear about that, or we won't have, we don't want to have anything to do with them. It shouldn't be that way. We should love them. Why? Because God loves them. We should love them enough that we want them to get right with God. We want them to, to live a life that's pleasing to God. Not put them to the side, not have, not have anything to do with them, but love them. Love them the way God loves them. Uh, fourthly, I need to go. The magnitude of God's love. He gave his only begotten son. Imagine giving your only son. I couldn't do it. And I'm sure you couldn't do it. But God did. Things about his sacrifice. And I'm going to speak through this. The sinless sacrifice. He lived here 33 and a half years, walked here on this earth, never committed one sin. It's a satisfying sacrifice. If you read the Old Testament uh, in, on, in Impact on Sunday nights, we started in the book of Exodus, and we've been going through, and there was one uh, lesson on Leviticus and talked about the different sacrifices. And one thing about the Old Testament sacrifice is they would they bring their ram to the temple to be sacrificed, but that sacrifice would only cover up their sin. It would only temporarily forgive them of their sin. Why? Because next year or next time they had to bring another ram. Uh, I bet you when they got home, they started looking for another ram. Like, I'm going to bring you next time. I'm going to do wrong again. I'm going to bring you next time. And they had to constantly continue to bring their sacrifice to the temple to be, be sacrificed so they could be temporarily forgiven. 
But when Jesus died on the cross, he died once and once for all. He died one time. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, every sin that you've ever committed was washed away, was taken on the cross. He died for every sin that you ever committed, that you ever will commit. He died for that sin. He died one time. <laughs> Took care of your sin. The satisfying sacrifice, the suffering sacrifice. I'm going to skip that. We, we know what God went through, the, the physical beating he went through, how he bore the guilt of all mankind, and how he was separated from the Father. And, and fourthly, as a saving sacrifice, the man on the cross said, Son, remember me. The man on the cross said, Remember me uh, in paradise. And Jesus said, The day you shall be with me in paradise. I'm thankful that he's saved. I'm thankful he's a saving God. I'm thankful he's our Savior. He will set you free if only you accept and trust in Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. And then lastly, there's a purpose of God's love. When you accept Jesus, you have a personal relationship with the Lord. When you accept Jesus, he will keep you out of hell. And when you accept Jesus, he will give you everlasting life. I'm thankful for God's love. Now, if we don't only just grasp His love, how it will change your life, how you will be a different person if you just, just totally just, just grasp how much God loves you. As Michaela comes, I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible about four friends. And they loved their friend enough to bring a bed. Their, their friend was paralyzed. And they brought a bed to that friend's house, put him on that bed, and carried him to Jesus. When they got to the house Jesus was at, it was crowded. They could not get into the home. So did they give up? No. They loved their friend so much. They had a grasp of God's love that they wanted to try their best to get their friend to Jesus. So what they do? They carried him up the stairs, top of the roof, and they cut a hole in the roof, and they let their friend down so Jesus could heal their friend. They had a grasp of God's love. What kind of love do we have towards our friends, towards our loved ones? Every one of us have loved ones that's dying and going to hell. How much do we call out to God? Our small group has 10 people that we're calling out, asking God to save them. On Wednesday nights, we have a list of names we call out, asking God to save them. How much do we love our family members that we're, that we're that we'd go come to God and, and to ask God to do a work in their heart and do a work in their life? Oh, if we just get a grasp of God's love. Some of, some of you may need to come to the altar and just call out your loved ones, asking God to do a work, asking God to transform their life. You may be someone here backsliding. You may want to come to this altar and ask God to... Uh, to forgive you of what you've done wrong and, and uh, tell God that you want to get back on the right path. Remember, God's there with open arms. He's waiting on you to come to Him. He's wanting you to get right with Him. Some of you may just want to come and, and just, just thank God for what He has done. Maybe you don't have a grasp of God's love that you should. Maybe, you are, maybe you're doing things you should not. Maybe you just want to come and just, just thank Him for, for His love that He has towards you as Michaela pray, plays oh come to the altar everybody stand please are you hurting and broken within overwhelmed by the weight of your sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus.
Jesus is calling you. Who oh, come to the altar? The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Someone here is lost and want to come down and give your heart and life to Jesus. Please come. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling you. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling you. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And oh, what a slave. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is y'all for for coming out this morning I just want to let y'all know that uh, almost every Sunday morning after church uh, we won't be next week being Easter but every Sunday morning after church we have a small group and what we do is we we're going through the book of Philippians uh, using David Jeremiah's study book and we'll have a meal and then we'll have a, a small group uh, this book, we got a book, you can answer questions, kind of go through it. So, I encourage you, if you don't have a small group, we'd love for you to come. I know uh, Brother Ray, they have one on Tuesday nights, uh, but they would love for you to come to theirs also if you free on Tuesday nights. But, um, and you. If we don't have choir practice, five o'clock, so I'll have to say that for next week and we'll go over to it. So, choir practice tonight at five o'clock. Any other announcements before we leave? Ladies Bible study Tuesday, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, anything else?
so youth, college age, young adults, a uh, small group on Wednesday nights. Brother Greg, you pray for us. Thank you. 